This 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 is Steve. I'm from uh, uh I'm from uh, South Kansas City, and I run the chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. I was listening to Left Shoe Politics podcast, and I want to be on there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Cut and Shoot, Texas. But you you just, said you'd have me on there, you liberal pussies. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then on that note, uh, that, that's our cold opening right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Today, we're doing another episode of the Left Shoe Politics Podcast. I'm Michael Malloy. This is going to be episode number 27. It's going to be really hard because we're going to be taking a little bit of a break today. Um, We're going to be diverting from the normal plan. Um, Right now, man, the news is really hot. There's subpoenas flying. There's a lot of things going on in in, in D.C., but we're actually going to focus on a different topic. It's a a certain topic, honestly, that comes up when Rick and I, uh, a lot of friends, a lot of liberal friends of mine, um, are having conversations, and we th- we think it's maybe a little bit of a problem, and we're going to put some opinions out there and want to see what other people think. So definitely, um, before we get into the topic, um, if you are, however you're receiving this, if you're getting it on Facebook, if you are getting this on um, on Apple iTunes or Stitcher, please remember to review us. It's so po- it's so important, and also leave us a little bit of feedback. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, definitely, that's what drives a lot of our discussions on here. Regardless, yeah, let's absolutely. get right into it. I'll bring in thank you uh, as you cut in front of me there, but my <laughs> co-host here, <laughs> um, Rick Shu. Rick Shu, how are you today, sir? Hello, hello. What's up? Are you ready for this conversation? I, I, you know what? You, me, you, and Jeremy, the three LSP guys, have had this conversation through text and, and Facebook private messaging for years, and then our guest that you're about to announce had a great idea to do it for a show. So yeah, man, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So again, what are we talking about here? Outrage culture. We're going to talk about outrage culture, political correctness, and we're going to come from the perspective, obviously, there's two out of the three of the uh, LSP guys on here, Rick Shu, Michael Malloy, and we're obviously left-leaning, liberal guys, progressive, whatever you want to call us, and we have a guest, and uh, we're going to talk to him about his political affiliation, and we'll go from there. All right, so go ahead and bring him in. So joining us today is Justin Kowalski. Uh, he's the host of the Let's Go podcast, which uh, Rick's done a bunch of podcasts with him and one of his other, uh, I guess, Batman entertainment podcasts. Um, and Justin actually approached Rick about this particular idea. And um, Rick told me about it, and I was like, I love it. This, these are things that we talk about all the time, and I want to discuss it too. So, Justin, welcome. Left Shape hey. Politics Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. I'm super excited. All right. Let's dive in. I guess... There's no beating around the bush. We are the two progressives on here. Certainly, that's that's part of what the site's about. If you don't mind me asking, what are what's your political affiliation? Are you left? You're right, center? Where do you fall? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I would say I, I was born in a pretty conservative, like Republican, like Ronald Reagan is the guy <laughs> household. <laughs> um, and you know, as I've grown up, I. You know, you kind of sometimes you just follow after your parents, and I started to be uncomfortable with you know just some of the, the ideologies. To be honest, just uh, I have a heart for people, and so I see how people can be marginalized and hurt, and so I was like, that doesn't line up a hundred percent with what I how I feel. But at the same time, I'm I'm not all the way uh, to the left either. I, I'm in the middle. I'm I'm a, I'm registered uh, independent. Um, I just can't throw myself at any party line because I feel it's kind of like why I wanted to talk about this because I feel like both sides frustrate me so much and I think almost like you don't have a home. Yeah, yeah, it, dude, exactly. Like, where do I go? I ain't riding donkeys. I'm not sitting on elephants. So where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> and so, because um, there's times I'm like really like, man, I'm right with where, you know who these cats are, and then there's times where I'm like, man, I, 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 I don't know, you know. Yeah. So, and and Justin, if you don't mind, tell our audience uh, where you grew up. That's because I think that's actually kind of important oh, here. Oh, I am from Southern California. So you're kind of from the L.A. area. Yeah, about, and, about fifty miles out. There you go. Yeah. Okay. But everyone's and, just say L.A. It makes way more sense. Yeah, that's sure obvious. That. <laughs> like you've been influenced by that liberal media out there. You ain't fooling nobody, Justin. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a lot easier for me to say. You know, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and everyone's like mesquite. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to be honest, the city, the city I live in, is really conservative. 
really conservative. I, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, look, you, you aforementioned Ronald Reagan. He was governor of California. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of Republicans yeah, that, and there's a lot was, of pockets. That was before the big switch. Well, the, the, it, it, indeed it was, but I'm not trying to get into all the nuances of everything. I'm just trying to paint a picture here that, I mean, listen, Jimmy Carter won the state of Texas was the last Democratic nominee to do that in 1976. So, you know, Texas has its, its obviously it's a blue past and California has some checkered red past and the states are very similar in a lot of ways, and then also very different. It's interesting. Texas and California are kind of a trip. Yeah, but the um, problem is, uh, that, <clears throat> don't get me started on that, though, yes, that we have South Texas, uh, a lot of people don't vote. Well, we need to help push us over the edge, though, but we'll get into that. In okay, we will, and, 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 and let's say this just for the audience, put this all in perspective here. So Michael mm-hmm. and myself both live in the Dallas area, and uh, or he lives in Dallas, I live in the suburbs. And uh, he's from he's from Oklahoma. I grew up here. And then Jeremy uh, uh, Grokey, or JT, as he is on the initials on the Facebook and Twitter page, as in Jeremy Thomas. He actually is from oh gosh, is it Amarillo? He's he grew up in, or I always get that confused with. Uh, I think that's right, Amarillo. That's right, Amarillo, Texas, which is like West Texas country bunkin. And he's been in LA now for like 12, 13 years. Uh-huh. So that's just to kind of put all this in perspective. Yeah, so we all we, we all come from like, red, like normally known as like red places that all turned out to be reasonable, at least in my book. And then the one the, the most neutral political person is the actual quasi LA native, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. So so here we are. Um, right. Let's get cool. into it. Um, so here are my. Uh, let me start off like by saying this outrage culture. I mean, I think it's kind of, it, it is actually pretty wide. It's, it can be sometimes can be hard to define. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's the overreaction to certain things uh, like that people see online, people say on the news and they, and they, they blow up at it. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it seems like like outrage culture, it turns productive, productive discourse into, into dumb competition. Right. And so there's some times where, you know, I feel like it is, it is, it's kind of like a mob mentality where at times it feels like we're really going after people and like, and nobody's even like really stopping to listen. Mm -hmm. Um, And and honestly, that this is a real scary thing almost like to talk about because I think it's got so crazy. I'm like, at certain times I kind of feel like, am I going to say something? You know, is the mob going to turn on me is something that I'm going to say, like, because I would like to consider some of these different like questions is it just going to like am i going to be accused of being ignorant or naive or be mansplaining or having like too much white privilege <laughs> it cuts off any like ability that i think that i have to be able to discuss these issues so i have like a lot of topics i like ones that like have come up um recently that i'm going to ask you all about but mm-hmm. i'll start with you justin what do you feel what's outrage culture what, what does that make you think of like how do you how does that define for you uh, for me, it, it feels like it distracts from the real issue. Because here, here's the one thing: the the power of like the internet and especially Twitter. I feel like that's where it it kind of you know it's it birthed successful. from, right? Um, and I actually I was talking to uh, I have a buddy, and he's you know, he's like ten years younger than me, and so I was t- actually telling him, "Hey, I'm going to do this show. We're going to talk about outrage culture, and here's my thoughts on it." And he actually was like. Well, actually, I feel like, you know, Twitter gives a voice to people who don't have a voice. And so he was actually in opposition to me. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay. And, and, and yeah. it, it kind of. Well, I, w- I would agree with that, though. I mean, yeah. And, and, and I do. Yeah. And I do. And, and we kind of we kind of got into the nuance of it. And but what I didn't really recognize is like for like actually like younger kids, like people in their, you know, mid 20s, late 20s, they feel like, no, this is this is my voice. This is how I. I get information out and this is how I let people know how I feel. And I completely agree with it. But I was like, there comes to a point where it becomes so loud. It's, it's like garbage on the street. And sometimes it's like, man, there could be something good on the street. I'm missing it though, because it's just a mess. And you only hear, you, you only hear and you only see the most ridiculous things. And your message is lost on me because of, you know, sometimes how you're you're approaching the situation and, and how you're delivering it you know it, it makes it makes a back and forth dialogue impossible especially on twitter twitter's not the platform for that by the way but that's where it starts it's it's it's, it's the it's the toilet there is no logical discourse i mean yeah. I, I think that's twitter also facebook it's uh, like any issue could like can be like absolutely blown way out of proportion it's just like two people sitting there like 
two people, a, a room full of people just sitting there going at it and then stealing away any potential of having a conversation about whatever the issue is. Oh, I, yeah. I agree. And I, I think they're the same. The, the difference to me, this is just my opinion, is that with Twitter, you're you're typically, there's this, uh, it could be an anonymous handle or just somebody you don't know. And whereas Facebook, that's all happening with people you went to high school with and you're kind of weeding out who you like and don't like 25 years later or whatever. <laughs> but, but it's kind of the same. Hmm. And, um, but Justin, if if I if I may ask you a question just yeah. real quick, you're not just talking about politics either, right? You're talking no, I mean g- it, generally speaking, everything. Just, because our little sub nerd culture that you and I are in the middle are, are knee deep in with our comic book and comic book movies uh, chatter. There's a lot of it, even in that culture. In, in some ways, it's like the worst toxic, yeah, you know, I, toxic fandom is like it's horrible. Yeah, I don't want to lean so much into. Like, I get where you're going. I don't want to lean too much into the pop culture side of it because I, I feel like pop. No, culture, yeah, I'm just, been, just generally speaking, yeah, is out but, there. Is all, is all I'm trying to say. No, yeah. but, I, but I do feel like it has adopted the 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 voice. You know, like yeah. oh, here's a way for us to dissent against you know you know movies and you know Game of Thrones wasn't what I wanted it to be like petition yeah yeah everything's a petition but I, I, th- I think I, it's but just I think the it cadence. parallels really well it parallels really it, well no it absolutely does yeah. it really does I think it's just a, it's the cadence that like all right we've hashed this thing out we figured out what social media is and how people mm-hmm. interact and it's just an awful place to interact with people <laughs> there is no like there is no I mean anything like what you're talking yeah. about it could be some really like stuff and then it just absolutely blows up into something else so i don't know what the next thing is but i hope it's way better (laughs) than this social media this online conversation like where things happen there used to be a twitter there used to be like this like twitter like you know protocol that no more than four tweets a day you know 10 years ago that that was considered (laughs) like okay that that's the max of your (laughs) of what you should be outputting now it's like I'm just talking now, you know. Yeah, just just roll yeah. it out, whatever you got to say. Yeah. Well, and they've tripled the character count since then, too. It didn't help. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't explain myself. Well, but. so maybe here's a couple of examples. Um, that let, right, I'm going to bring up like a couple of situations, and you can also try like yourself, though. But, um, mm-hmm. Justin, I want to get your feeling and see where you, where you fell on this particular issue. And I'm going to start with one that's actually one of the most recent. So, Joe Biden... Right. Oh, so yeah. um, he's announcing that he's going to be running for president. And the next thing you know, there was uh, news reports and they were wall to wall news reports of that. Uh, some women came out and uh, one woman at first came out and said that she felt that he had um, made her feel like a little bit uncomfortable. Not that he sexually assaulted her, not that he did anything ever aggressive or she was ever um like at some extreme unease, like where he violated her, it was just that. What well, what's your how do, what was your reaction to I mean, obviously the media and and what you saw like about that story? Yeah, well, I'm I'm actually glad you brought that up because that was one of my examples. Um you know it's weird because we're in the Me Too movement now. And um I actually think it's very important for us to call out people who are abusing other people, you know. Mm-hmm. Um to, I mean, I'm being honest, and this is just, this is my opinion. I don't think Joe Biden is preying on women. I think he's, I think a lot of it is him, his upbringing. He's from, you know, that's just he's an older guy, and I'm not saying you can be handsy, but he might be just kind of a touchy guy. I don't, I don't see it as being like, yeah, hey, he I'm is. going, you know. But I do feel like now we're like, oh, in the Me Too movement now, I think. Everyone, you you kind of go, man. When was I? When was the last time I like maybe touched someone on the shoulder? And uh, right. and and I'm not being hyperbolic because like, man, I could be in trouble. No, right? you are not. You're and, not being hyperbolic. At all. But 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 you see how it can come off that yeah, way. Yeah. And so see, right I now, that I think that what you're what you're struggling through right now yeah. is a part of the problem. Is that you're basically saying this publicly, and yeah. and it's making you so uncomfortable. To think like. Am I going to, like, I have to be very careful here because if I say that, like, I'm, you know, against me too, or like, am I somehow, like, casually supporting sexual assault, which I think has nothing to do with that? Yeah. You're afraid well, that something like that could be spun. Even yeah, you're, no, you're, 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 <laughs> you're, 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 you're 100% yeah. right. But I, I feel like, man, like, this is, you know, like, and here I am, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming from the middle and I'm going to go, hey, to, to, you know, to the Democrats, like, this might be your guy. And you mm-hmm. might be pulling the rug underneath him right now because he was holding on to someone's shoulder, you know, like, 
is that his character? And I would look like, look back on who this guy is from what we know. He's, he's not a predator. He's not a creepy guy. It could come off creepy because now we're going to frame it. We're going to find every photo of right, his right, hand right. around someone's waist. And you know what? And it's, and again, it's not to discount the claim on him. Like, oh, he did this. Yeah, maybe he did. And you know what? Sometimes the conversation needs to go to him and not to us. But instead, people are like, I'm going to put it out on Twitter. Or I'm going to talk to the news, that, you know, the outlet and say, hey, you know, you, you know, five years ago, Joe Biden did this. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. Talk to Joe Biden first and go, hey, you, when you did that, that made me feel uncomfortable. Don't put it out for everybody because you know what? That may not be what it was. And it, I, there's almost like, it, I think the, the Me Too movement has also bred a victim culture where I, I think some people, this sounds this sounds crazy and, you know, let me know if I'm out of line, but it feels like some people want to be a victim instead of people, there's actual victims and then there's people that, ooh, yes. I could be a you, victim. You are, absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead. One, yeah. one, 100%. Yeah. And so and there you go. So I feel like, I feel like, um, you know, people are going to start shooting themselves in the foot and, and, and really hurting people that are innocent, but they're, you know, it's like, well, that's the brush I've been painted with by my own people. That's what it feels like in the case yeah, of Joe because, Biden. Because it's kind of like it's like it's like crying wolf, you yeah. know that that there are. This is a huge problem, right? Yeah. It's a huge problem that I that I fully admit that men um, do not understand do not understand like what women go through. It's like mm-hmm. it, it's it, even like even just hearing stories like how women can't walk down the street um, without being cat called constantly by like, yeah. people driving by. And I'm like, there is definitely a world that we don't get. Yeah. Absolutely, say, and, and, would, the, and the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room is that we are three guys on this podcast having this conversation right now, and I also recognize that. Mm. But we have we're all three married. Um, you know, we we have sisters. We have you know we have I have daughters. Uh, you know, we obviously care very much about women and 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 how they feel and things that they experience that we obviously don't know. But it doesn't mean that we can't sit here and have a conversation about it. It certainly does because we are, we, you know, we value all that and that's part of our opinion. But I think it's fair just to, just to address that because I'm sure some people are probably going to point that out. So we, we recognize that we're here to have this conversation because we're, we're also trying to figure, I mean, I don't want to speak for you guys, but I feel like that we're kind of trying to figure all this out together ourselves. I think this is a cathartic conversation for me hearing this stuff too. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to feel, figure out like, where do I fit in with all this and how do I react to certain things? And it's, and, and, and part of it is we're so concerned about how we react and what we say, because we're under a microscope, especially if you're a celebrity, especially if you're someone running for president, but even just having a, even a somewhat online presence, like we have one tweet or something that you post that's off color a little bit or something, and you are suddenly labeled something that you're not. And I think that's kind of what we're talking about here. Joe Biden is touchy feely. Is, is can there be an argument to be made that like you know maybe that maybe that's not the best idea maybe we do need to even like evolve like past that but I, I would even go so far I was so just upset with who is this woman that came forward you are not sexually assaulted and you don't you are not in anything close to that club you came forward because he decided to run for president and you thought that this is a story that the world's got to know that one time you felt a little bit uncomfortable but he did not violate you at all why was that appropriate why why is that appropriate by the way well, well, the news because media that's the, that story yeah well that there you go I, I feel like it's it's a story now now everything every every touch is a story and and it's 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 really upsetting because it's like Again, going and, and I'm talking to like the Democrats. This is your, this is one of your guys, and he's one of your good guys. Like everyone, everyone's got guys. Everyone's got got good guys and bad guys, right? And when you start going after your, your good guys, then here's what happens: the right jumps on. They're like, "Yeah, now now you're giving them like kerosene, right? Like I, I just don't understand it. Like right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I th- I think that that liberals should hold. Like that, I, I recognize that conservatives will let their guys get away with anything, and they'll just never acknowledge that they've done oh, yeah. anything wrong. I'm okay with holding us to a way better standard. Of course, well, well, we yeah, should do that. Yeah, but, right. Because we we elected a guy that's on tape lusting after his own daughter, bragging about grabbing women by the kitty cat without permission, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then Al Franken resigns. Yeah. That's the world we live in. 
Yeah, just, I, I, that that is yeah. exactly right. Right. But but at oh, the end of the day, that the, the, these things are just not connected. And and political candidates also, by the way, do they need to be vetted? Absolutely. But blowing it up and creating this sort of situation, it was extremely unfair to Joe Biden. And by the way, I'm not I'm not some Joe Biden huge fan. I I mean I, I've always like really liked him. I've definitely not decided on him as a candidate. But my God, if I was going to run for political office. And like that was the bar. I know, like what just on what you're saying. Like I have, I've definitely been an asshole sometimes in my life. I like have I I've ever put my hands on a woman's shoulders or something like that? I don't know. Like surely, surely those things have been done. So is this the bar that we have to make sure? Like no matter what, you, I, hey, he, I felt a little uncomfortable around him. He didn't do anything wrong. Well, but I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. if I if I may say something on that, and I think this is um, to me, this is a very important point is that Biden is, he's an old man and he's old school. I, I turned 44 this month. I'm from the South. I ha, I still to this day, to this to this day, <laughs> despite all my liberalism, I've just like pumped into my veins for 25 years of my life, uh, 30, whatever. I, I have to watch myself because I've always called women, you know, sugar and honey and hey baby and I've, I've always done that it's always it was it, to me it was just uh in terms of endearment in a sense it was just the way you talked yeah. you just can't do that anymore and that's okay i'm not saying i should i shouldn't and i and i have worked on even to this day all these years later uh you i just i i have to resist it sometimes because it's just so naturally ingrained in me imagine being joe biden or someone like him who's mm-hmm. 70 something years old and the it, i guess the larger point i'm trying to make here is this it doesn't justify modern behavior we have to adapt to things that Absolutely. are not acceptable anymore and uh to 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 give bill Maher credit here he recently said look we're going to look back in the time we're living in now 20 years from now and there's things that we're doing that we're going to in 20 years from now go oh god I can't believe we acted that way or talked that way or said that way mm-hmm. he was like you may not realize that right this minute you don't but it will happen and he's right he was very right about that point and that's what I don't want us to become yeah we right. we need we need to grow we need to change and we need to adapt all of us myself included but what I don't want to do is I don't want to retroactively vilify everyone because they acted a certain way in a certain time when that behavior was acceptable. There's obviously limits to that, right? W- abusing a woman, never acceptable, ever, yeah. ever, ever. I don't, you know, yeah, three, and, and, through 300 that, years ago, that wasn't acceptable. And you know, you yeah. know what I mean? But just things like culturally, the way you touch or the way you might phrase certain things or insults, you might say that, you know, you could say in a, in a major motion picture in 1988 or 1994, and it was funny. You can't say anymore. Yeah, and society, you know? by the way, the way it works, it's group thought, right? Our culture, and we're obviously we're a lot of different cultures, but all like collectively, we do have a certain level of group thought. That is exactly that's just what happens in society. Yeah. And sometimes you don't recognize, you didn't know, like, or you could have mm. been a little bit risque, but you, like late, years later, you look back and you're like, oh my God, what the fuck was I thinking? Well, yeah, let, me right? give, can, let me give a quick pop culture example. And then Justin, please jump on this yeah. one because this is like your area of expertise <laughs> is um, I'm a huge guilty pleasure fan of the Bill and Ted movies. Okay. You guys know those movies? Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Those are Bogus excellent Turn. movies. They're excellent. <laughs> they're just wonderfully, just, they're just amazing. Keanu Reeves and, and Alex Winter are about to film their third one. And one and, and Alex Winter was recently asked, hey, are you and I'm gonna say a very uncomfortable word here. Are you guys going to say fag on this next movie? Now, here's the deal. If you guys remember, they would hug one another and yeah. they would jump back and go, Fag. Yeah, and that was funny in 1988, 1990. That was never homophobic. It was just funny. It was just a, a slang, a word. Now when you know how it makes gay people feel. You're like, you know what? Bullshit word. We're going to retire it. We're not going to use it anymore. But what I didn't like is all this like overwrought and uh, I wish we wouldn't have done that. And, and and I'm going, guys, come on, man. That was a different time. You don't have to apologize for every single yeah. thing. You didn't mean it to actually attack gay people. It's yeah. just It was just goofy slang. Let's not do it. I don't want it in the new movie. It would be jolting and it would be offensive and it would be... Uh, repulsive but we don't have to like yeah. try to retroactively but, make everything but that's better. but that's the thing rick the culture we've created is you have to apologize forever for everything everyone here's the thing everyone 
wants grace, but no one wants to give it. And and it's it's hard. Ooh, it's, it's hard. God, to, that's a good phrase. Yeah. Well, it's hard to be in in the Twitter, like especially you know going back to Twitter. Everyone, it's all hot takes, and it's just like this person's the worst person. This person's the worst person. They should be you know they should be fired. They should be this. And then it's like whoa. But when you flip it around, like. That's not what I meant. Well, it, it's, you know it's, what I'm saying? It's it, because Twitter, Twitter is not it. Like I'm missing. It, it's just it's not the real world. That yeah. I, like I'm I. You read things on Twitter on social media, and then you talk to people in person. Even ones you disagree with, they're like I don't. It, most people don't feel that way. I'm like, yeah. where are all these but people? I, but I feel so like it, an outrage. But I do feel like it's starting to inform the real world. I really do. I really oh, does it does it push it? You know why it pushes yeah. the agenda is because it, it, the news it, it, media it, 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 will yeah. report on it as yeah. if it's a thing. Because and that's just like, it is the real world. Yeah. Now. Well, because here's the thing. Here's a good. Here's a good part of it. And it, it, here's a great example of you know the power of social media, but at the same time, like oh man, it, it, it became something good, and all of a sudden it crossed over the threshold into like what to like what's going on with Biden. You have like the Me Too movement is birthed out of that. I feel like you know this like you know Weinstein. Like I don't know if. He, he would, I think he would still be where he is if the power of social media really didn't rally against him. You know, if people started to to expose all the things that he was doing. And I'm like, man, there, there's the positive. There's the power. Yeah, of like, yeah, hey, we can do something that's, good. That's the good thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's like where it's actually used for good. But then it becomes like, <laughs> you know, Joe Biden is a grabby grandpa. Like that's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, is that is that is that is that where we're at? That's where yeah, we're it's, at. It's now. the outrage police need to go get their next yeah. fix, right? But and, but talking about what, what sorry, but what Rick's saying is now everyone is like, oh man, I'm I'm so sorry for what I did, and it takes you to the whole other extreme. Now, like, let me just make up a scenario. We have a guy who who maybe there was a guy who was actually a, you know being super assaulty with ladies, like in the nineties, mm-hmm. right? And let's say now, you know what? He's married. He's turned over this leaf. He ha- he's actually said, you know, I've apologized to these ladies. I'm sorry. What I did was reprehensible. But it turns up like one of these ladies is like, you know what? In this climate, this guy did this to me. And then he gets raked over the coals again. Like, when when is it okay for someone to say, hey, I said I'm sorry. I repented from what I've done. I've apologized. It's, when I think when it's is no someone questions. free? Is can redemption is redemption allowed? In fact, yeah. let me get, let, let me segue into that by bringing yeah. up and um, ooh, you're going to be ready for this one, right? So we're gonna be, <laughs> we're going to be wading in some troubled waters and, here. And, and, and by the way, if, if this if this episode doesn't piss off conservatives and liberals, we're not doing our job because I think because <laughs> I think this needs to be a very raw and honest conversation. That's about, my goal, <laughs> right? Well, it, like p- political correctness is running amok. Yeah, I also don't want. Here's the difference. There's there's people that think. That you can't say racist shit anymore means you're being politically correct. You're like, no, because racist shit is bad, and we don't need it anymore. We don't need Confederate flags anymore either. I'm not saying ban Dukes of Hazard. Okay, I I grew up on that show in the early '80s too. I get it, but you know what? It's 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 awful when you really dive into the history of what all that means. Let's put all that stuff in museum. Let's move on. This doesn't pretend like some of the stuff didn't exist, right? There's there's a there's a balance to this, but it doesn't mean that you can be racist. It doesn't mean it's okay to call Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas yeah. or to make inflammatory comments about African Americans or well, whatever. It's, it's it's a it's an it's a look. Everything can always have like a little bit of an overreaction to it, right? Right, right. It, there's it, a balance to all this. Yeah, you yeah. have this horrendous person who says awful things and racist things with all types of racial epithets, everything like in the Oval Office. And so I understand the reaction to it because it makes, it's disgusting, the types of things that come out of his mouth. But it doesn't mean that no matter what, you can just go to the extreme, you know, and everything has to be racist. It it just, it, Mm. it cuts out any possible don't, opportunity for like having like a good conversation right don't yeah do not do not cheapen actual racism to me because yeah. racism is a very i know i i know both of you personally well enough to know that racism is not tolerated in either of our any of our homes and and you're justin i don't mean to get into your personal life on this podcast but you're in a multiracial home as well it's probably hits mm-hmm. a home even harder for you yeah all right we have zero tolerance for that bullshit in my house i know you guys do as well um, so, so let me go to the topic. Yeah, right? please go ahead. I'm yeah, go go. Minute, though. Yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to give you my. Opinion you did interrupt a good point, though. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I, I'm look. I'm, I'm going to uh, just stay. You're like Rick. I'm hosting this motherfucker. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on a time clock here, so shut up. <laughs> okay. All right. Here, here is the topic. <clears throat> All right. Let me just uh, like straighten my chair. I'm a white man, and. I do not believe it was fair, the treatment 
that Ralph Northam got. Okay? Let me explain my point real quick. Virginia governor, Ralph Northam, newly elected, um, had a picture that was revealed about him. Um, back in a yearbook, he was shown to be wearing blackface, and I think it was in 1982. Let me also just say for the record, as I feel that I have to do. Yes, blackface is awful. It is insulting. It's dehumanizing towards towards African Americans. It mm. is it's it's a representation of like how people were subjugated, and it it absolutely has it has an attachment to a horrendous part of our history. Like nobody's taking that away, but in the same light. I was actually very upset about it. I was, I remember having a lot of conversations and also with many of my black friends who didn't feel the same way as the media, the treatment that, that he got. Like if, let's just say that he had worn that blackface, right? And this picture came out and he had an entire history of, you know, voting on some pretty awful things like towards African-American people, right? Does that... Like, that would maybe definitely change my tone here. But if you look at his entire history, you look at, like, what he has done since then. In that yeah. 35 years and all the, I think, progressive policies and things that he voted for. Like, he, uh, I don't know, he consistently always voted for minimum wage increases, which obviously benefited the African-American people. Voted against voter suppression. Voted against, you know, restriction on women's rights to control her body vetoed efforts to stop sanctuary cities the man's not a racist okay yeah. and look I, it, it it is very scary like like to say this but can i not say that i think that blackface is awful and insensitive and racist as hell and not say that by the way in 35 years i think he should have found i think he has found redemption in the treatment for a week straight wall-to-wall -wall coverage on every single channel as if that's the most important thing in the world was ridiculous well and yeah. if i can say this i agree with probably most of what you just said it's it's a lot to digest and um and your rant there but uh, let, me, let me say this first of all some of this is is brought upon ourselves when there is a true problem with racism on the right particularly the modern right in the trump era very specifically okay um, this notion that Republicans have always been racist is nonsense. George Bush was not, he was, I mean, I have a lot of issues. I'm not going to try to retroactively make his presidency something that I admired because I do not, did not, but the man wasn't a racist. He just, his family's not, I mean, they're just not. Yeah. I think the man that's in the white house right now very much is. And if he's not, he likes to cater to racists and that's almost even worse yeah. in my view. Um, with that said, does the left play the race card too much? Yes. And so when we do that, because we do, all right, and there's a balance. Like, no, that's not playing the race card. That's actually racist. That's mm -hmm. playing the race card. You have to, it's a, almost a case-by-case -case basis. But when that happens, and then we're the virtuous ones, or however you want to phrase it, and then suddenly there's somebody with blackface that's on the left, well, we're, you know, we, we kind of open up that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 you're tolerating it yeah, because, right. because you're the progress because it, because it's right. your guy. Like, and no, it, we're not. And, I, and I'll just say this about kind of black faces. It's, it's a touchy topic because I agree with everything you said in terms of uh, how racially insensitive it is, and and um, it's it's awful. You know, you anyway. I, that, that could be a 45 minute conversation by itself. All I'm going to say is this: it goes back to what I said earlier about um, how th certain things were acceptable. And they're not now, and that's a good thing they shouldn't be. But doesn't mean we have to like rewind the clock and say, "Well, if you did blackface in 1982, you're racist." And here's why I say that: is that blackface wasn't people are like, well, it wasn't acceptable in 1982. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was acceptable in 1995. Man, acceptable. remember? I remember Ted Danson did. It. Yeah, well, to be fair, he was kind of ridiculed, but to <laughs> to an right? extent, to an extent, but not, but but I, I still think that's a fair point. Not to how he would be today. He was he was dating uh, Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. but Justin, dude, there was a movie in the late '80s with Thomas C. Howe and James Earl Jones oh, Soul called Man. Soul Man. Yeah, and it was like you know a comedy that was just you know, it, 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 and I'm like again, I'm not saying make that movie today. You can't, but just not pretend like blackface was something unacceptable. I'll have a confession to make here. I was. When all this kind of blew up, I had a uh, a college uh, party 
a Halloween party in 1996, I think it was. I think the math that that math adds up. Anyway, and it was at my apartment in Louisville, Texas. I went to University of North Texas, and um, two buddies of mine showed up. They're white guys, and they were men in black. And and I'm like, obviously, would never say their names or anything. But one of them was Will Smith, and he was essentially blackface. He was genuinely just dressing up as the character, mm-hmm. right? He just he really was. He, he wasn't trying to mock black people or anything. They they literally loved the movie and just wanted to be men in black. He couldn't do that today. And I was like, I'm going to burn every picture of me posing with him because, <laughs> right, if I ever ran for office, that came out. Oh, my God, that would look awful. It's, and, it's because you yeah, because you believe in blackface and you think that blackface is, is right? okay. Yeah. Like, no, like, really. It's just, he was like a, just a call. I mean, was it yeah. jackassery? Yeah. But, and, and so, I think that's I think that's a valid. There you go. It, it was it was kind of it's ignorance, not intentional. Thank right? you. Right. Yeah. And and. Yeah, <laughs> we we, to- we totally got lost off of uh, what we were talking about with um, oh man, gosh, what was what was his name again? Ralph Northam. Yeah, Ralph. yeah, like he, he he's got. I'm sure he was like, oh crap, you guys, you guys brought this thing up, you know? Like, <laughs> is <laughs> it just kind of goes back to the point of pick? We got to pick and choose what we're going to attack. Was that worth like again, almost ruining this guy's career? Probably did, right? Like, well, he didn't leave office. Yeah. And, you know, but, and I was, I was at the time, but, uh, although afraid, afraid to come out because there are a couple of times on like a social media thread that I was, I, like I commented and, and saying some of this arena and then everybody then would start attacking me. And I'm like, no, my point is way more nuanced. Like this doesn't mean that I think it's okay. That That's not what this well, point is. And one of the biggest things is like, guys, it was in a yearbook. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, this wasn't yeah. something some photo. Yeah, it was like a montage their shoe bo- of himself. Their shoebox, right? Yeah, that just goes to the point that it was acceptable. It shouldn't have been. Glad it's not now. That's the point we're trying to make here. It's it's a it's a nuanced thing, and this is why I think people are going to hear something and they're going to just assume something else. I I, I, de- I deplore legitimate racism. I I deplore like the stuff that's happening now. Also, the horrendous things that happened in the past. But to, to but to dedicate our country's attention to something and then de- absolutely demand without question that guy's got to go for something that happened that long ago is a mob mentality and it's unfair. Yeah. And by the way, ever since then, I think he had a, I think he had a great record before this incident. And he's been making amazing overtures to the black community. And I do remember as we had it, this literally was going on for over a week. And it was the only topic on conversation mm-hmm. is then I start seeing they're doing interviews on the street, actually in Virginia <laughs> and they're in they're interviewing and polling people there. And nobody agrees. Nobody's demanding that he, that he has to go. In fact, he had, he was over 50% approval in both all Virginians and the African American community. Yeah. And so you, all this was fomented up by media. Have you yeah. talked to any of um I'll, I'll even say our Michael, because we, we share a lot of friends. Have you talked to any of our African American friends about this directly? Absolutely, and I remember speaking to them at two different guys speaking them at the time, and I, I approached does one. Him does, like, does, does one live in San Francisco without naming names? Uh, that is not one of them. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I did have the because I love I love his yeah, go, ahead, and, go ahead and and did did approach it, and honestly, they were both right next to me. They're both like, look. That's some that's some racist shit. Don't get me wrong, though. But like, this is they're blowing this way out of proportion. And I just I just wanted to see that in the news media because. But then again, the woke culture, the the outrage culture, it is an extreme fear that even resides in me. Does this mean, boy, they're gonna somebody's gonna turn around and say like, look at him. He obviously has some. You know, he he just doesn't get it, right? He yeah. obviously has like a racist side to him and completely taking out what my real opinion is, which is based on a lot of different nuance and understanding of the issue. Because I haven't, the reason I asked that, I, I haven't really discussed that. And it's with, um, and I, I probably should, like, because it's, you know, coming from my perspective, it is different. I don't, we, there, I do believe that white privilege is a real thing, by the way. Damn there, right it is. It's, it's real, right? There's no doubt about it. It doesn't mean that, that we don't have our, you know, you know, we're human and we have our problems and everything. But, it, you know, there is a, a an inherent 
uh, advantage that we have in society over our black brothers and sisters. There just is a luxury and advantage. You are absolutely one, right. one, one hundred percent. So, so like when I when it comes to stuff like this, like I just I, I, I want to be careful. Like I, I I recognize that it's it's nonsense that we shouldn't ruin a man's life over blackface in 1982 when that was more acceptable than people are making it out to be. Especially when we're talking about these movies and pop culture things. And, and Justin mentioned Ted Danson. We all agree that it's wrong, and let's get rid of it. And it's not just black faces. I don't want to get fixated on that. It's such a, such a gross topic anyway. But just, again, generally speaking, like, if we're getting better, if we all look back on our lives, whether it's me calling a female sugar or uh, or someone doing blackface in college in 1987 or or whatever and learning and recognize that we yeah. recognize that mm-hmm. it's not the culture we live in now or Joe Biden going, man, you know what? I just, I just always grew up touching women and, and it was just okay. And they, no one cared. Well, but, not that it's not know, just the culture now, but people but, but, care now and, and they should, women are more empowered there. And, and that's a great thing. That is a great thing. Yeah. It, or that we recognize that we were wrong in the past. Right. I sure. mean, that, like, mm-hmm. like I could see like, Oh man, I don't know how in the hell would that we didn't see it. Like that, that Bill Mark Clint that you're talking about, he even brings up, you know, throw, he's like, we used to like, when it come to trash, you would just throw shit right out the window. It was like a really funny line. Like people live, all the time and, you know like that, that's like a social faux pas now and nobody thought there's anything wrong with that i i listen there i i know smokers that are older and like they'll just light up in front of anybody i'm gonna, i just gotta pull them aside and say you just you this isn't 1978 this isn't 1984 you just can't do that anymore like why people not have cha- people have changed <laughs> like they don't want to they don't want to inhale your toxic smoke it's not cool it's not cool in 2019 and it, it make it, it can apply to a million different things um i just want to make myself better i want to make i want to i want you guys i love you guys personally i want i want you guys to be better and that's that is the ultimate goal here i just don't want to vilify and again retroactively um you know (laughs) something you did i mean obviously there's certain things again that if you did if you actually rape somebody or whatever that's entirely different conversation make sure i'm clear here right that's right all right so let me ask you this Let me ask you, I'll ask Justin this. God, this, it's, this is actually, it's a great conversation, but it's it's hard. This it's, is a hard talk. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard because, yeah, you're worried about tripping on something and something to be misinterpreted, not my point. But, all right, Justin, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. So, if I can accept this, that this is a, it, it, is a, it is a reaction, right? And I think that this, you know, me too. And some of this PC culture needed to happen because, like, it, I... This kind of like these resurgence of racist and racist attitude and being okay to say like racist things for whatever reason, like a lot of it emanating from the right. I don't want this coming back in our culture. I want us to progress in the right direction. But I'm complaining about these things. Where do you think, how is it that like we find the right place to set the line? Like what is it, something that might be quote unquote offensive to me, you know, might not be offensive to somebody else. Like where, like how... How do we wade through these waters to know, like, okay, now that's definitely something that we have to, like, really aggressively pursue? Man, yeah, that, that's a that's a great question because uh, I I feel like this: if someone's offended by something you say, you you have to take that to heart. Like, if I say something, and I can take this to the basic relationship, if I say something to my wife and it offends her, I can't tell her she's not offended, right? Yeah, like I can't <laughs> control. But I think <laughs> yeah, you know, every, everyone's like yes, <laughs> uh, but. But there is a point where I feel like when we get out into society, there are, th- there are things where like, well, now hold up. Like we get into, you know, there's like, um, there's like 132 gender identities now, right? right. It's almost like you're just going to step on a grenade if you say something wrong unintentionally. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there's certain things where I'm, I kind of sit back. I'm like, okay, we're, we're just way out of hand now, right? I, 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 that's just how I feel. I feel like. Well, well, hold up. Not everyone knows what you're self-identifying as. Like, educate me, help me, so I at least I don't offend you, right? But when, when you have 130, so I, I'm making that number up, by the way. It's yeah, probably, yeah, no, it's no, probably no, no, but you know what I'm saying? saying it's, it's like, it, 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 it. Well, even the idea of changing, honestly, changing a, a, a birth certificate. I don't understand that, and I, I don't know if that... I don't know if that makes like a lot of sense to me, yeah. but but it I also stand on the side of, of of very much wanting to. I think that 
people should be able to go into any bathroom they want and also live the life of whatever gender that they were because I know that's a more complicated topic than just what genitalia you were born with. Yeah, though, I don't. But- yeah, and I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to turn it into that. But I'm just saying, like, it, but it's one of the things I sent Rick a, a text the other day because I, I have a friend and she, you know, she got really upset with some guy at a show. She went to saw a band and he pushed her out of the way and she was just like. You know, this guy did this because he's cis, heter- he's cis heteronormative white male entitlement. And I'm like, whoa, you know, we, we've, we've now. Maybe he was just a drunk asshole. That, and that's, yeah. that was my point. Maybe he was just a drunk guy. Like, you, you know, why do we, ha- why does it have to be like, let's super categorize everybody and get upset about it and post it. And she says, well, I selfie shamed him. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, yeah, you know, I, I, I know. You're, I know and and, and it, 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 listen, the, the political correctness and the uh, the outrage culture, yeah. I think, are their brother and sister. Yeah. Well, enough. they are. They, I think they've they've birthed each other. Like, yeah. like political correctness has gone so far that now it's like, give me a reason for vengeance. Really, and, and, and it's like it's like we want to we want to see people just be torn down to to like eliminate them like, to the you, ground. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a job. You're gonna your whole life's ruined because you said something, or you know, you know, God forbid, you did something in the '80s, and I found out about it now. I wasn't even born then. Half the people that are upset weren't even born when this cat, like, you know, did what he did. <laughs> but it, yeah, you know, I don't know what the answer is. I feel like I feel like um, where kind of coming back to my like political like you know ideologies. I just wish people would talk more instead of going right. Oh, I'm gonna tweet this, you know, like okay, hey, let's talk about how th- our differences. One of the one of my favorite pictures last year was, uh, it was George W. You know, and he's holding Michelle Obama's hand. Was that last year at the funeral? Beautiful. Yeah. I'm like, that's what it's about right there because we can have and and and, and that's how. Remember, there was a even further back. There was a coke or a pepsi commercial and it was the two dudes what, what was his name um they were oh gosh i can't think of their names man but republican and democrat buying a coke they're arguing all day like and then you know once they punch out they're like, hey let's go get a coke and it was like <laughs> a great commercial but you know what? it was like that's what it's about let's figure out how to solve our problems together maybe we're going to get loud maybe we're going to yell but we got to figure out like when does it become ridiculous? When can we go like, hey, you know what? When can we self-check each other and go, hey, right there, like, take it back a little bit on both sides because I feel like there's no re- there's no rest. I guess that's the problem. There's, there's a no conversation rest. on on social media is because the, yeah, you are, I am having an interaction with somebody, and I know it's it's the I also can we point out we recognize the absurdity that we have a Facebook page with thousands of followers, right? That and you know that's like a big part of like what we do. I understand we're a little bit a part of the problem. Okay, if we can just set that aside for a minute. Um, if you have an interaction with somebody online and it almost always goes into the toilet, right? I think what it, the problem is, is it's kind of like everyone has like needs like has an itch that needs to be scratched, like to definitely mm-hmm. kind of get their voice out there. And you and you want to have interactions like with other human beings. But this thing that happens online, it's falsely telling your brain that you had a conversation, that you had some sort of substantive something. But the nuance of conversation and the things that you figure out when you're talking to each other cannot happen like on social media. It happens one out of a billion interactions. Yeah. It's just it's just not quite possible. It's not it's not. And I think part of the problem is this is how different is, is your personality online versus in person? Oh yeah. I, and I yeah, how many I, awful people that we, like, we know that are awful online, I, at least I, from I, our perspective, and then we meet them, we're like, oh, my God, like, you're totally different. Well, we, we will not name his name, but you and I have a mutual friend that's that way. I'm like, I got to get this mf on the phone because, <laughs> you know, I can talk to him on the phone. I, you know, for, for better or worse, I don't feel like my personality is that different on, on either. And I think anything I say online, I'd say to someone in person, uh, and I'm certainly not... <laughs> like some kind of beacon of like, you know, let's look up to Rick Shoe. If you, if I'm, if I'm that guy to you, you've got problems. But I, I just, I, I but I, I do think that we need to learn to talk to one another. And even in, in, in Michael with our brand here, um, because if you're listening and you're new, Left Shoe Politics is my last name just because it was a funny play on words. Left Shoe, Hardy Har, but it's three guys equally. And, Man, thanks for explaining and, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, you, you people, people, you know, you know, we're, me. we're not <laughs> Rick Shoe sycophants. It's just that's what I was at the time. Right? Right? No, <laughs> exactly. Well, and you know, to be fair, I've told you and Jeremy a million times. Let's rename this thing. We can't come up with. Yeah, we, can't we came up with one good one. and It was taken anyway. Um, but that's but it's three equal people. And, you know, I went to you and Jeremy both. And I was like, you know, I'm I want to bring on, a, you know, a Trump supporter and have a conversation. And I've done that a couple of times. It's been the same person. Yeah. And uh but I think it's important, you know, and yeah, we yell at each other and, and it's some of it's probably a little uncomfortable to listen to. And if you don't like the toxic culture, that podcast, those podcasts might not be exactly for you. You're like, God, they're doing it. But if you listen to the whole thing at the very, towards the end, we, yeah. we start coming together. And like on the last show I did with Dr. Doug Frederick up in New York, uh, who's a, who's an ardent Trump, Trump supporter. And I, I think I hate this guy and I don't use that word. I cannot stand Donald Trump. And so it's hard. It's hard to like reconcile. I want to like you personally. I want to respect you, but you're liking this person who wants to ban Muslims, calls Mexican rapists, and I just I could just go down the list of things that he's doing as president. That's just things he did as he ran. But you're like they're not seeing it that way. And so, what's our, so what's <laughs> so, our common? So what's our common ground? Well, let's talk about Stevie Ray Vaughan and, and blues and and. and and yeah, Robert Johnson and and Jimi Hendrix. For your your a common while. ground is, I think, honestly, is to dispel myths. And to, to be a to be a human, man. Let's yeah. be a human. <laughs> I, I actually really liked how that show ended because you're right. It it was hard to listen to at points, but mostly because here again, I, I feel like I was at the point. Oh, that out. last one I'm in the with middle, me and Doug. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just like those. Those are the things you want to fight for, bro. <laughs> like there was some. <laughs> there was some. Like that's not that. That's not the stance I would have. I would have took if I was trying to to you know defend like my vote for trump you know what i'm saying like that well, was <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and i'm not you know i'm i, I listen to the shows going man i could have really done better there and said something different and so it's 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 hard it's listen talking to people especially in this climate with different political views especially if they are exact opposite if you're a ardent trump supporter and you loathe him as i do it's very difficult to find any common ground. And there's some people you're not going to have common ground with, nor should you. Because there's some people that are just flat out like, yeah, F Muslims, F Mexicans. And, you know, like, okay, well, okay, you're on a different level. Go away. I don't want anything to do with you. But there's a lot of people in good faith that are on different sides of the political aisle and even are supporting this president. And we have to just learn to communicate. We have to also learn online to just not come off the handle on everything. And I say this, this has kind of been a war cry to me, is, is liberals are destroying liberalism. We are becoming, we, listen, all too often we are accused, Michael, I'm talking to you, you and I, we, Justin's not in this category, of being too politically correct and, mm -hmm. and et cetera. I'm like, bullshit. That's just your justification that you were wanting to still be able to say racist stuff and get away with it with immunity, exactly. and et cetera. Yeah. And, there, and, and there's a big component <laughs> to that, right? But over time, it's like, damn, we kind of really are now in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, I, like, I, they, they come up with so much bullshit, I think, about the left and cast, cast us in a really weird light and like our opinions and how we arrived at certain ideas, you know, and, and like the, I hate it when they're right. You know what I mean? Mm. And this one issue, I feel like, all right, okay. You got like a little bit of a point there because I, I I'm rational enough to like to be able to recognize that. I think at many times, very often we've just going a little bit too far and we need to take a step back and know that like you should take measure. Not every situation is the same and not every situation do we need to go guns a blazing. And right? let me yeah. just say this. I'm a tree hugging liberal father of two. And I was lecturing, I wouldn't call it lecturing, but I was at least talking to my oldest, my seven year old daughter whose soccer team sucked this year. Sucked. <laughs> they were terrible. <laughs> They had a couple of good games towards the end. I'm they triggered. But I'm they, triggered they, they, by those, that. those girls were just terrible, <laughs> and they're gonna, they're going to get better. I have faith. And of course, we get a participation trophy at the end of this thing. And I'm like, nope, Dad doesn't approve of that. You guys didn't. You guys didn't deserve a trophy. I love you. You, you we're going to get better. And you, what you deserve is another shot. And you're going to pick yourself up. And Justin, to make a Batman reference, I'll see. You know, we, why do we fall so we can pick ourselves back up? You know, yep. all the all these Even things. I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a great. It's a it's a great line. And um, and that's that's the household my girls are growing up in. They're growing up with two liberal people, but we're also like. We're, you know, 
we're we're sane. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yeah, how to explain. Well, I, yeah, I like, know if you brought like that up. Thing. We went. We like this is real life shit. You don't need. Tro- you don't. You don't get participation trophies in real yeah. life. Is that a, is that a liberal thing or is that just like everything? And then they just kind of put that on the liberals. Well, you know, like you know all what? parents were doing it. No, yeah, because I think it's kind of a liberal thing, bro. Is it? Well, yeah, what, what do you mean so. participation trophies? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean that's no, always got under my skin no, because, too. I'm like, wait, come on. I was at. I was at. Like full disclosure, I was at a basketball game my kids were in. Uh, and it's in a church league and they, at one point they turned the scoreboard off because it was going to hurt some kids feelings. So it's everywhere. It's I'll tell everywhere. you, I, I'm going to tell you, Everybody's everyone playing. in that room, you you had a good mix of left and right in there. And they're like, we're going to turn the score off because the kids are starting to feel bad. And I'm like, I have, and I, act, I told the ref, I have a huge problem with that because my kid needs to know that his team's not doing well. Yes. And that's and that's not a liberal thing or a conservative thing. That is a hey, as people, how do we know how to measure ourselves? We have to see the results, right? If you don't yeah, see the I don't results, think you're shattering some kids' yeah. confidence because like like there are winners and losers and yeah. like it and sometimes you you don't you don't have to completely win every single time and I don't I, I and you're don't not really going to thinking about it. Yeah. You're not going And listen, when I said earlier it's a liberal thing, I was kind of Halfway joking because Justin's right; it's everywhere. Yeah, but you know, I was going to ask you guys: this. <laughs> helicopter want, parenting yeah. has no R D next to their name. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys this. Uh, if, if I'm allowed to ask a question, do you yeah, feel do you feel like outrage culture kind of has been birthed out of out of liberalism, or because I'm just saying that's oh, oh, that's where I kind of see it. Like again, no. taking a step back, I'm like I feel like it's kind of it's it's like this reactive. Um, we're all going to get so upset about this thing. And I feel like it's rooted in a a justice, but then so yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's let me, here, let me go, Rick. Okay, I'll, let me answer this question, please. Um, I the root of all of this is um there there is social justice, and that's the way. And yeah, I think that most progressives kind of view themselves is that uh you know we recognize that racism is a is a real thing, and mm-hmm. so and and white privilege is out there, and sexism is out there, and there's all these awful things. That are just a part of our, they're part of our culture. And so we've almost, it, it's our responsibility. It's since obviously if one political spectrum is not going to stand up for those people, like we definitely feel like we're the ones. And so we're the ones that push back against it because we do right or wrong, see ourselves as the defenders of the quote unquote ob- ob- oppressed, right? Mm-hmm. But like any good movement, like any smart movement, I, that it can go too far in that too far can sometimes do more harm than good. And so I, what you're asking is, did this come from liberalism? Did this come from like what it, it came from good intentions, but like it just kind of morphed into something else. Well, yeah. I think if I may, I, I, you made a lot of great points there and I don't think anything I'm about to say negates or tries to supersede anything you just said. I, I, I don't have any analysis of this. I'm pulling this like from my ass. But just based on my own like anecdotal experiences here to answer your question from my point of view, Justin, is I think it probably birthed more from the right. But hear me out, okay? I'm not throwing I'm not trying to like right's good, left is a bad thing, or vice versa, whatever. Yeah, even, if, it, even, it, if, it, even if it is, but okay. Right. But, 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 <laughs> you, here's, you have a show <laughs> called Left. Yeah, you're not there, but yeah. Well yeah. <laughs> Less, we're we're well, the good you know, guys. We're the good guys. I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. We, we wanted to be left hook politics, and some jerks have that name already. He's like, we're fighters, man. We're not. There's you know, nothing new under the sun. We're, we're, oh, not, wimp, we're not wimpy <laughs> liberals. But anyway, but I think that the right did it with the transition of culture in this country when, quite frankly, when, when you see minorities becoming more um, – going towards the the majority when you see certain things like hey by the way confederate flags and that whole thing robert e lee schools named after him not a good thing this is all very literally pro-slavery sorry there's no way to spin that it's history yeah and and, and people didn't want to let that go and uh, they were angry about it and it's not just republicans it was you know i think old school blue dog democrats it's how we got trump i mean in a lot of ways that's where he came from so what happened is they took their outrage of like I, I, I'm I'm not playing a race card when I say this I believe this that the 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 sort of the male dominating whiteness of America even on a subconscious level when you start to lose that you get angry and you're lashing out and all these things but here's here's the problem in classic left Democrat progressive fashion we had the upper hand and pardon my French we fuck it up 
And we actually become the people that our reaction is somehow just as bad, if not worse, than what we were initially responding to. So then we took it too far. So now, I'm sorry, you can't have things that are like inherently racist and sexist acceptable in society anymore. Cry me a river. But now we're going to be outraged by everything. And everything's going to be sexist. Everything's going to be racist. Everything's going to be outrageous. And we and will that's, tolerate not even a hint of it because, that's, that, because yeah. that would be opening up a door. That's And that's the problem of where we're at now is that the left has gone, dare I say, so far left. Yeah. On, in what, a lot of ways, is that is that um, would you consider like Antifa part of that? Because I I'm just, I look back and I see like I feel like they're like a they're to me I see them as like a terrorist group. Well, yeah, because it, the like, way they behave and how they rally and they get violent, and I'm like, man, like and and, that's, and sorry, I don't I don't mean to I don't mean to to bring that up in the sense of like, uh, you, you know, what was it? Gosh, in a was it in Jamestown? Charlottesville. Char- Charlottesville. Yeah. Like, you know, when everyone's there, like I- I'm not, I wasn't trying to compare it to that, but I see a group like that. And I think that's, that's the, that's the wrong message of like, that's where it goes too far. Right. Well, here, here, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say about Antifa. And this is a loaded thing. So I'll, I'll make this brief. Yeah. And I'm not accusing you of this. I know. No, I was, you, I was I just asking because I'm, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. no, I no. Think... What, I'm, what, what I'm about to say, I don't, this is not directed at you. Yeah. Is that Antifa really is a buzzword for people to justify Trump's abhorrent reaction to Charlottesville. That's all that is really. They are, they are nothing. They are just, I mean, I'm not saying they're not causing some problems here and there, but the funniest thing to me about Antifa or Antifa or whatever people refer to them as is that the, yeah the anti-fascist but how they're pronouncing the um, acronym abbreviation is uh it, <laughs> they are an anti-government group mm-hmm. they're anarchists in a sense so how in the living hell is that associated with the left where we're accused of being the big government you, you the, are the insults to the left sometimes are just so funny and they and, and they're so inconsistent we are the Big government, government, everything, but we're also Antifa who are anti-government. We are the snowflakes, we are the wimps, the the liberal, you know what? But then we're also the violent, aggressive left. That's you know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I think that's like, what I was saying. Like, yeah. I, I was I was saying like, I feel like that gets lumped in with the 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 super far left, like the you know, as as we're talking about like outrage culture, the people that get really worked up. I think I think people actually misconstrue that. Sorry, that's where my point was going. Was like, what do you think about like when people start throwing that into like, oh, that's they're a part of Antifa, you know? It's, well, well it's, I, I think I think this... there's it, it's I think there's more analysis there. I think that Antifa is is a reaction to things that people are fearing to be borderline fascist. I mean, especially like what like going back to Charlottesville again. Yeah, I, I don't I believe in peaceful protests because I don't think anything is ever accomplished by violent protests. Like it yeah. just it either you're not going to win and it, it just it probably diminishes your point in the first place. But you had people that are Nazis and Nazism isn't just a light ideology. It's about murdering and slaughtering yeah. people you know, and I remember even seeing that in the night. I've recently been to a concentration camp in Germany. It is not a joke. The yeah. Nazism is the most horrific thing to ever happen in like in human history. And these guys yeah. are coming up there and they are also violent. And then they get themselves in a clash with them. Yeah. And then you say, well, yeah, but they shouldn't be like, they shouldn't be fighting with them or they shouldn't be throwing things at them. Like, I, I can agree. I like peaceful protest, but still think about what it is that they're pushing back against. Uh-huh. Right. right. No. So that that has to be taken like into the consideration. I don't think they're they're terrorists. I don't. I also don't think you should be breaking windows and and throwing rocks and all the things that they do. But it is definitely a reaction to a, a lot of huge problems, and that's been like using the government, using policy to attack poor people in in the in this country. And, and I, this is going to shift gears a little bit, but as we're Obviously, about to wrap this show up. I want to make yeah, one. Are we supposed to be talking about outrage? Where are we? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, all... No, 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 no. <laughs> I think I love this. I want this conversation to be fluid, and it's all kind of tied in together anyway. But I'll say something. We've we've brought up a lot of examples of um, of the left. We've talked about Al Franken. We've talked about uh, Ralph Northam. We've talked about whatever, right? Whomever. Um, but let me just say this. I want to make sure that this is on the record because. There was a Florida congressman, I believe, that resigned also over blackface 
that he had like the late nineties. And so that was prior to the Virginia deal. And so I want to make sure that that's, I don't know, I don't know his name. It just kind of came to me. Like we should probably address that if we're going to talk about these things to make sure it doesn't sound like this is just one sided. Like if, if we only care of the D's next to the name bullshit, we don't, uh, I know you don't, I know I don't. And, uh, I know certainly Justin doesn't, but I'll say this when Sarah Sanders, who I think is, an absolutely miserable human being. I think she is a mouthpiece for a pathological lying uh, menace in the White House. And I think I, I just I, I have zero respect for her. With that said, when she was going into public restaurants and she was being harassed and I came to the defense of that and said, no, 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 mm-hmm. we don't do that. Well, you, let the woman eat in peace. A lot of it had to do with me also, like, don't also interrupt a business and other people having dinner with their families because you want to make a political point. But it wasn't just that. It was also like, I don't respect her, but I respect her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I still respect her existence. I don't like her. No, I think it's her but, right but, to but, privacy but, but, and her like, right, right in the public space. But, but if, we're, if, if the left becomes the, um, the, the mob fashion that we're going to go after and harass people. Now, if, if you're on Capitol Hill and they're at work and you're protesting and you're in DC, that's all fair game to, I mean, to an extent, right? I mean, as long as you're, you know, you're keeping your distance and you're doing it appropriately. But if she's in, you know, Little Rock, Arkansas for some kind of event and she's going into a cafe and you surround her table and you're yelling at her, I have zero tolerance for that. And yeah. I, right. So yeah, I want to just make sure that that was on the record. That's all. Yeah. I, again, it comes back. It comes down to just being decent to people. You can have, <laughs> you can have <laughs> different, differentiating, you know, opinions and views on things. You can be a complete butthole. <laughs> but I feel like there comes a point where, like, when someone's like eating their meal, sitting down with their family, what? It's like, there has to be a time when something's off limits. Like, when can we turn it off? And I don't know. You know, yeah, yeah, um, well, and, yeah, and I'll talk to anybody as long as they're coming with a good faith argument. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine sitting on a Fox News panel or a Sean Handy or somebody like that. <laughs> like that, those are the dumbest arguments ever. I'm like, you, you, there's no way you believe that, and that's that's your approach for an argument that drives me nuts. But in yeah. real interactions, the non Twitter, the non cable news, yeah. most conversations that you're having with people. You like you learn. Like I, I learn things by talking to conservatives. They open my eyes to some things, right? Yeah, and I help. Sure. I, it's a better understanding of we're, the position. Yeah. We're, kinda, we're, we're, we're not going to defeat Trump unless we understand what yeah. put him in office. Well, I kind of feel like you know, and not on all issues, but I think most people just want to make you know life better for each other. And sometimes it's just how do we approach it differently? We have fundamentally different ideas on both sides. You know, you see it, and I, th- I think once people you know kind of sit down have a beer and like talk things out. You can kind of, okay, yeah, here's where, you know, here's where we're on the same page and we just can't get there anymore. I, I, and I, I don't know why I love that. You, you try to do it. Like Rick, I know like one of your ideas is like, Hey, kind of, you know, resetting, like, what does it mean to be uh, a, you know, a liberal in our society now? Right. Cause I mean, we've talked about this before. Like some people are completely off off you know the rocker and and and, and I don't, i'm not trying to dig so much into to the left because i i see the the right too i feel like the right just doesn't do it well <laughs> like like it's it's like okay well oh we're gonna use twitter to our advantage and they just they, yeah, they don't yeah, have yeah. they don't have a clue but like but but well, i wanted to get to the james gunn thing how it kind of like he was like just railing on people and then they fought back you know and i was like and again it was like this guy so yeah. real quick, so real quick, hold that, Sorry. hold that thought for Michael and our audience. Yeah. So James Gunn, uh, director of Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, um, uh, filmmaker, and he had some unsavory things online, some yeah. jokes that, by the way, they pissed me off and they they offended me. Yeah. They, me and Rick did, actually talked about this. Th- that he would put on. that stuff publicly. I mean, I've got a sick sense of humor behind the scenes with like closed doors with your buddies and you tell some sick joke. I mean, everybody's got some dynamic like that in their lives. But when you're going public with it, you're going, what is wrong with you? Like, that's that's not just as Trump would say, locker room talk like you're, but, but in retrospect, yeah. you look at back on it, he was just being kind of a weirdo or whatever. Yeah, and it goes to our conversation shocking. and he was yeah. pushed out of his trilogy, his guards of the galaxy three. He was demonized and vilified online and actually made out to be a pedophile. Like, no, 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 no. Hold on. Those were some sick jokes, but they were just jokes. 
There's no history, no record of him doing anything like that. That's so not right. And um, okay, so Justin, from there, pick it up. Is that it? Yeah, I just yeah. Wanted I, to paint that picture. Yeah, no, and I, I feel like the the right came after him, and they and they they showed all these you know these tweets he had, and they almost put like this pressure on Disney again to fire this guy. And and because and, and he was going after Trump and, and yeah, Trump's exactly. Yeah, minions, he was going right. after. I think he was going after like Ben Shapiro and and things like that. And right. so and I, I think he was actually defending. A, like a, a somebody and it was like hey one of his buddies was like hey you know maybe we should try and listen to you know let's have a dialogue with Shapiro somebody got upset about that and then anyways they they pulled all his tweets and then he ends up getting fired from his job and, and again kind of taking this all the way back to the beginning um what what did we gain from that what do we gain from like okay he doesn't get to make his movie he's gonna make a movie somewhere else you know but it, you kind of you throw this 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 tag on him like is he a pedophile no i mean do we know that you know hopefully he's not but why did he you know <laughs> the I bigger would, thing is like man you, you but you do the lesson is you gotta be careful what you put out there because people will will use it against you you have you really have to be careful what you put out in social well, media on that side you know i'm running i'm flying blind so i can't wait to go google to figure out exactly what like oh man things that he okay. said, sorry but, that's yeah. my ignorance i thought this was a bigger story <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, well, they, that, that's that's in our nerd sub. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a nerd thing. Yeah, but yeah it's our it, Twitter it was, bubble. What, what was it like? Let me tell you how like how out of touch I am with the <laughs> comics. Like, what, what is this big movie that just uh, got released that like broke all records for box uh, office? Oh, Avenger, End, Endgame. Avenger, Avengers Endgame. Yeah, yeah. Avengers. Endgame. Yeah. I like it's brilliant. I, this is brilliant. <laughs> I have never. Justin and I love it. <laughs> I, I caught a story online that said that it broke some record. That was my first time in my life I'd ever even heard of the movie. I didn't even know. I've wow. never. Heard of it in my entire life, bro. You gotta get out. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's, that's probably nothing. why. Hey, and listen, I think this is a great place to end the show because we started with Justin and I have done comic book, comic book movie podcast and stuff, and now we're we tied it all in <laughs> to the pop, the uh, political online outrage. And good, good. All, all right. right, so uh, <laughs> Justin, I know we announced it the first time, but you got something real quick to plug? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I do a podcast called Let's Go Podcast, and I do a Let's Go Comic Show. Uh, it's more. It's super nerdy. But yeah, I do those. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. You can just follow me on Twitter at J underscore Rocca. So. Gotcha. And, and Justin, yeah. you're, an, you're an important voice, and I appreciate you coming on the show, man, because like you, you, you painted this picture of having this Reagan-esque, you know, Republican upbringing. Um, and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a religious man. And, and to, to come on, and, and that's having guests like you is important, especially for topics like this, because me and Michael and Jeremy can podcast just between the three of us are bringing our guests and we can have like a liberal, you know, love fest, Mm -hmm. but having your perspective is paramount to really trying to convey this message to, um, I was going to say the masses, but you know, the handful of people listening well, yeah, to our show. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's every, it's like most of these conversations that when you have like an actual conversation, even somebody that un, like perfectly aligned with what you perceive to be your political spectrum, that yeah. like, we're, we're not all that far off. Like it, like I think it, it is social media and it is the news that kind of make it paint it to be like something different than it is, you know? Um, except, except for except for unless you love Trump, yeah, we're we're pretty fine. <laughs> so, and, 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 my, and Michael, before you do your closing um, thing, if, if I may, sir, I'll just say this too: if you're listening, and there's anything about this topic where you're like, man, I have a friend or a brother or sister or whatever, or myself, and I would love to. I got so much to say. I'd love to comment on this. Hit us up. Obviously, Michael will plug all that stuff online. But email us and um, or uh, Rick at Left Shoe Politics. Email me. And if you want to come on the show and you want to have a conversation, let us know and I will make it happen. Whether it's just the, me and whoever or Michael and whoever, we will, we'll, we'll bring you on. If you're, if you're, if you're ready and willing and want to come on and make a point and defend a position or defend Trump or whatever, I'll, I'll uh, it's just, it's an open door policy. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Michael. Fair, fair enough. But, but yeah, but yeah. Okay. But not all of them. All right. So, okay. <laughs> well, right. If you, you call me and you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm my Mike. I love Trump. I'm like, you know, it, which is exactly why I booked Dr. Doug because he's an educated man with a medical practice in New York city. And not some, you know. This 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 is Steve. I'm from a, uh, uh, I'm from a uh, South Kansas City, and I run the chapter of the Ku Klux Klan. I was listening to Left Shoe Politics podcast, and I want to be on there. 
<laughs> I'm from Cut and Shoot, Texas. <laughs> you said you'd have me on there, you liberal pussies. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then on that note... Uh, that, that's our cold opening right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. All right, um, so that was Left Shoe Politics Podcast, episode number 27. Um, as we said before, please, uh, if you're finding us on iTunes or Stitcher, please comment and like as you hear on every podcast. Um, obviously, uh, we're on Facebook. That's where most of our followers come from, Left Shoe Politics. Find us on there. We're on Twitter at... Left shoe politic with no S cuts off right there um, at the C. In closing, one last time, we recognize this is a hard topic. We also recognize that, like, hey, when you've got just a bunch of guys, and especially like white guys talking about this topic, we get it, right? Um, but also, we think it's really important to be able to say, like, these things are hard, but they need to be talked about rather than like, feeling like we're progressives and putting a quarter and say and being afraid that somebody's going to misconstrue something that we're saying though so hopefully all of this was somewhat insightful for you so until next time i'm michael malloy for rick shoe and justin kowalski saying good night thanks for listening to this episode of our left shoe politics podcast you can find us on twitter at left shoe politics Follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash leftshoepolitics and the LSP website, leftshoepolitics.com. Search for our channel on YouTube, Stitcher, and Google Play.